Okay, so it's a beautiful sunny day in my backyard and we're going to cover how to carve a spoon from the log to the roughed out spoon ready to dry. So first up I will split it from around on the fro and I'm going for a radial grain orientation here which means that the growth rings from the tree are going vertically in the billet. I'll start by uh, very roughly squaring up the billet. You don't have to do this, you can go straight into cutting the crank, but I like to make things a little bit tidy before I start. You see any areas that are obviously too thin to make a spoon, it's, I find it helpful to chop them off so that they don't distract me when I'm laying out my um, design or when I'm putting in the crank. I'll use a uh, small silky saw to cut a line and then I'll chop down to it from both sides. There's a bit of a special technique to chopping down from the front because obviously you can't hold it uh, from the top because there's nothing there to hold on to. So I'll lay it across my block from the side. And using a special cutout in my bench, I can chop all the way into the bottom of the line across the grain. Uh, I'm slicing at a bit of an angle here so that the tip of my axe always ends up just at the bottom of the uh, line that I want to cut. It takes a bit of practice, but this is very quick once you get the technique down. So now I'm, I've cut in my crank and my billet is perfectly flat. I will start to draw on the spoon and I just do this by hand with a, with a uh, watercolour pencil. The reason I divide the bowl into thirds like that is because it is a visual aid that helps me draw a well proportioned bowl to the spoon and I always put the two thirds line into the uh, bottom of where I axed my crank in earlier. So I'll put two additional stop cuts here um, for when I split the waist off the sides of the handle. If um, the split runs the wrong way or if I miss when I'm striking with my axe, that second stop cut is going to absorb the blow and stop the back of my spoon from being split off. And that's a trick that I learned from Adam Hawker. So I'll axe down the sides of the handle now, pretty close to the line. And you can see as I get closer and closer to the back of the bowl, I'm going to make lighter and lighter cuts. And finally, I'll end up just pushing my axe right into the corner. If that's not going to work, then I'll give it, I'll rest the axe in the cut and give it a little tap, or like I'm doing here, just very light, careful cuts towards the corner. And if you ever have a little um, hanger on, you can just give it a quick tap from the other side. So the next step is to start axing in the shoulders of the bowl. So I'll start by splitting away some of the waste. And then I'm going to axe down at a 30 degree angle from the edge of the bowl towards the center, creating two large facets that meet with a ridge in the middle. And once I take off the central ridge, then I've got the back of the bowl already resembling something round. I'll X the profile of the spoon. And again, you've got to be careful with this step. Um, it's better to be slow if you're not confident with your axe work. And what you can do is, if you've got a little bit outside the line, is use your axe like a guillotine here to just take off the rest. So hanging the spoon off that same uh, scallop that I've cut in my block, I can axe in the shoulders. I do this at a little bit of an angle to start um, shaping up the back of the bowl. And what I like to do here is, is check to see that both my shoulders uh, meet at the same point on the back of the handle, and in this case they don't, so I'm going to spend a bit of extra time on this one. If you don't do this, you're going to have to spend a, a little bit more time cutting with the knife to make them meet in the middle. So I'll take the extra waste off the back of the handle with a few um, confident hits. Sometimes your axe will jam into the crack and um, send your spoon flying. You just need to remember, don't try and catch it, just let it fall and pick it up again. 
now that I've cut around the sides of the spoon shape I can see where a little bit more material needs to be taken off the back of the bowl. I like to get this pretty thin at the axing stage so that it's not too much work for me to do with my sword knife. And this is about where I'll leave it and I'll start picking up the knives. First thing to do is just generally clean up all the way around from where you've cut with the axe. You, I like to cut all the way to my line and uh, leave just a little bit of the line left on. So I'll use my chest pull cut here to cut down each side of the handle towards the bowl. And again, being careful here not to strike the back of the bowl with the knife because that will inevitably cause a crack later. Use a what I call a potato peel cut around the sides of the bowl to clean it, clean it up to the line. And this works on both sides, you just need to flip the spoon the other way. Same thing on the top of the handle, and I ran into a bit of trouble here with tear out so you can see me cutting from both sides to try and find the, um, the sweet spot there. On the back of the handle I'll do the same, I like to start establishing my facets if I'm going to carve facets on the spoon, which I almost always do. Here what I'm doing is cutting in the shoulder of the rim, which I like to do before I hollow the bowl. This allows me to see how much material I have to work with, and I don't have to go back and forth too many times between the hook knife and the straight knife for carving the bowl. It's just a bit of a, a forward thinking that will help out later. So once I have cut in the shoulder, I will sight down the front of the bowl and I'll see if it's even with the handle, and if it's not, I'll carve a little bit off one or the other side to get it flat before I start to carve the bowl. I always rough out my bowls with the grain for starters. Uh, I find that I can take out material more effectively that way using stronger cuts. So I'll go down from the back of the bowl towards the crank line, and then once I have scooped out a little bit, I'll come at it from the other side using my uh, chest pivot cut with the hook knife to scoop out that waste. On a larger spoon, I would start this with a tuka cam, but on an eating spoon like this, it's easier to just use the one knife. I like an open curve hook knife for this job because the curve of the hook knife um, is complementary to a nicely shaped bowl on an eating spoon. I find that what a lot of beginners will have trouble with is that they'll be using a tighter curved hook knife, for example like a Mora 164 or something, to carve their eating spoons and the bowl, the shape of the knife doesn't complement the shape of the bowl so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to get a good shape and what they'll often do is carve a bowl that's too deep with too steep sides that's not going to be comfortable to use. So you can see what I'm doing here is assisting the back of the knife with the fingers of my spoon holding hand and I'm always trying to use my lap as a stable platform for me to work. I uh, switch in between these two different grips, so carving with the grain and across the grain, because carving across the grain I find gives me a sweeter shape, whereas carving with the grain gives a superior finish. So it's a combination of the two techniques where you can get a nicely shaped Nicely finished bowl. People often, I think, have trouble with getting chattering in the bowl when they're using the hook knife, and I think that's another example of where choosing the right hook knife shape for the job can be advantageous. So, because this knife has a nice round convex bevel on the outside and the shape of the blade is complementary to the shape of the spoon. As long as you're using it um, with respect to the grain, you're not going to have any of those little nicks or chatters that you sometimes find. So for the back shoulders of the bowl, I like to do the finishing cuts with the grain. So I'll come with a pivot cut across, and it's important to always, always pivot and scoop with the hook knife, never try and just pull it through the wood. And any little jaggy bits that you can't clean up, you can go across the grain to get those.
it's really helpful to carve in good natural light like this so that you can really see what you're doing. After I've uh, carved out the bowl to my satisfaction then I'll cut the rim and because I already cut those shoulders in earlier this is super easy so I'll just take a very light shaving off of the rim of the spoon using a cut from the tip of the spoon towards me towards the shoulder of the bowl. I like to blend in those angles with the handle so there'll be a, a central ridge on the handle and two facets that smoothly blend in towards the rim of the bowl. You can see I'm, I'm going to fiddle a little bit with that to get it just right. So once I've carved the rim, I'll go around the outside and get the shape finalised. So I want these to be pretty much the final cuts for the rim. For the um, profile I mean, and then for the rim, I will just sight down the spoon from the top, try and make things even uh, on both sides, and make any little adjustments that I need to make at this stage. Often what you'll find will happen after that is that one area of your bowl will have a thicker rim than the other because you've carved away more of the um, hollowed out section. So what you do then is after you've carved the rest of the spoon to your liking as the sort of last little thing you do, you can get your hook knife and just carefully cut around those small areas inside the bowl to get the bowl even all the way around with a nice thin rim. I'll just uh, sneak up on the final shape of the back of the bowl here as well, going around the edges, um, trying to carefully transition the back of the bowl into the handle. This is what I would call the thumb pivot thumb push cut, which is really helpful for these final cuts on the back of the bowl. You saw me uh, drawing a pencil line on there earlier. Because I've cut my rim precisely, I can register my finger on that rim and draw a pencil line that traces that plane all the way around so then if I know that if I cut to that line from the bottom that my spoon bowl is going to be an even thickness all the way around so that I'll, I'll just carve that off after I'm done. So as I said earlier here, I'm going around any spots where the rim is looking a little bit too thick and I'm feathering out the bowl to make a nice even rim all the way around. So for me that was the back corner and just the tip here, which I'm going to do um, with that uh, chest supported pivot pull cut, I suppose you would call it. Any little tidy ups, I like to do them now so that if I, when I come back to this spoon to do the finishing cuts, I just need to lightly grace it with a knife. And you can, uh, you can see that process in one of my other videos um, called Finishing Cuts Demystified. I'll put a link to that up in the cards. Uh, but basically, now that I'm finished carving this spoon, I'm going to put it away with some wood shavings to dry. And once I'm satisfied that it's dry enough for finishing, I will come back to it and recut some of these surfaces to get a good finish. But, you know, that's not always necessary. Like, if, if the wood is strong enough and you did a good enough job with your initial carving, sometimes you can just finish the spoon straight away. And all you would want to do then is, is just lightly cut in your chamfers on all of your corners. Just break those corners and um, once the wood is dry, you can give it some oil. I also find it's sometimes not necessary to do like specific finishing cuts for a surface finish. For example, if you're going to roast or ebonize the spoon, which is going to um, change the surface color in a way that it doesn't matter if you have areas of uneven oxidization, which is um, what can happen after you let your spoon dry. One aspect of this uh, spoon design that will make carving it a little bit simpler and easier is that you'll notice I've put a sharp corner on the inside of where the handle meets the bowl. Uh, this is something that I like to do um, and it's influenced by historical spoons that I've seen where they didn't try to create a little radius inside there, they've just got a sharp inside corner. 
and I haven't had any problems with the durability of the spoons, but what it does mean is that there's no finicking with the grain direction change in that area, uh, which is a, again another one of those little tricky things, but it's very easy to avoid and I, I find that I actually prefer the aesthetic of the spoon this way with a um, clearly delineated bowl that goes all the way around. So when I do the final cut around the rim, what I'm really looking for is to either do a, a series of very very tiny cuts or one smooth curved cut so that I don't get any um, flat spots in my curve. So I'll take a lot of care with that and, and just do the lightest cut that I possibly can. Thanks for watching.